Hi, Sharon. Hey, Howie. I've been reading this exclusive story of yours on The Wrap about uh, Mel Gibson. Yeah. Uh, generating a lot of reaction. Uh, so I know you're not going to tell me how you got this letter from Joe Esterhaus, who's teaming up with Mel Gibson. But I'm wondering if you think uh, that his effort at a career comeback uh, is really going to be short-circuited by these revelations. Yeah, well, as you know, he was in the middle of trying for some kind of comeback in making this movie, The Maccabees, which is a story of Jew Jewish heroism, the, the story of Hanukkah from the second century. And he'd hired Joe Esterhaus, a very famous screenwriter who kind of left Hollywood. Uh, but I guess he forgot, uh, you know, that Joe Esterhaus is uh, himself quite a big personality, and he didn't like uh, what he saw in, in Mel Gibson's conduct. And he wrote a nine-page letter laying out chapter and verse, and Joe, Est Joe is a very good writer and, you know, a good ob observer a uh, keen observer of the human uh, human behavior. So, uh, and, you know, which does which does bring me to this question, and I'm sure you asked yourself. You know, does Esther House have any kind of motivation in in uh, this blistering attack on Mel Gibson? Using his own words, uh, but why would Joe do this? And any hesitation about whether he is faithfully recounting, in fact, some of these anti-Semitic slurs and other inflammatory things that Mel Gibson said. Yeah. Well, a couple things there. I mean, first, as to whether the veracity of it, you know, it's kind of, um, you'd have to believe that Joe Esterhaus is really out to fabricate some crazy stuff. And, you know, we have enough of a pattern of Mel Gibson's behavior to know that, that this pretty much sounds like the Mel Gibson we know that maybe some of us might have thought had reformed or not, or, 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 or not. But, you know, we've seen the worst of him, and this is more of that kind of thing. But uh, at, we just did, uh, uh, I just interviewed Joe Asterhaus exclusively um, not too long ago, and we're going to post that story today. And he, he says, I don't like being called a liar, because Mel Gibson, of course, responded and said, um, These are utter, this is utter fabrication. He said, I don't like being called a liar, and I have a tape. So he has a tape. He hasn't played it. He doesn't need to go there. That's one thing. Secondly, as to why he did it, I think that for one thing, he's heard these very violent threats um, uttered by Mel Gibson, allegedly, uh, against Oksana Grigorieva, his former girlfriend, who he now has a, a custody agreement with, and supposedly all that should be behind him. So I think that he had I'm a legitimate fear. Going to have her fear. killed, Gibson said, according to Esterhaus. Yeah, he said, going, and he said it repeatedly, and uh, enough that I think that Joe possibly doesn't want anything bad to happen to her, and certainly wouldn't want something bad to happen, and then him not to have said anything. So uh, that I think that it, that's one thing. And the other thing is, you know, he he. You know, Joe likes <laughs> he likes to make a fuss, but I, I just think that he felt deeply. You know, you might ask, which people are asking, like, well, why go into business with Mel Gibson anyway? Like, you knew what the guy was, um, and he says that he. Now hoped, you're shocked. You're shocked that he used shock, shock like that there's gambling going on in Casablanca. So uh, his comment to that is, look, he said, I had, you know, I knew the guy had an anti-Semitism issue. I hoped the power of the story would would convert him. <laughs> would change him. Um, nice prayer, Joe. But, yeah. you know, some of this language uh, that Gibson is said to have used, you know, calling Jews oven dodgers, Jew boys questioning the Holocaust. I have to ask this because, you know, watching Hollywood from an East Coast distance seems to me that uh, no matter how bad you are, no matter how controversial you are, no matter how much crazy behavior you exhibit, a la Charlie Sheen, um, that you can still be in the movies, you can still be on television shows as long as you're a box office, as long as you don't drive the audience away. And I'm wondering now, has Mel Gibson used up the last of his nine lives? Well, I mean, I think that you bring a, up a really good point because, you know, what is Hollywood, you know, and again, I speak as, as an observer, but to some degree, you know, I'm kind of an insider now. I've been here quite a long time. And I, I ask the industry sort of, what do you, how do you guys want to be seen by the outside world? Do you want to be seen as somebody, as you just described, will do anything as long as it makes a buck? Um, you know, and what do you have to do to kind of be considered persona non grata? I mean, even the cast and crew on Hangover 2, another Warner Brothers movie, balked uh, and when Mel Gibson was given a cameo. And they said, you know, we, we don't feel comfortable working with this guy. And this had just happened after, right after all those horrible tapes came out of him uh, threatening Oksana Grigoryova. So the cast and crew can be that way. What about the companies <laughs> that what run about the job? The, the guys, the studio yeah. people make the decisions. Well, yeah. that's a troubling question that goes beyond Mel Gibson. I'm going to keep following this story because it's fascinating. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for, for talking about it. See you, Howie.